When LeVar Ball announced in early January that he was taking two of his sons to Lithuania to play pro basketball, many thought it was just another media stunt designed to keep the Big Baller brand in the spotlight. He had already taken LaMelo out of Chino Hills High School in October when the coach threatened to curtail his enormous amount of field goal attempts. And LiAngelo had been indefinitely suspended from the UCLA team for allegedly stealing something on their trip to China. So it wasn't like this decision was all that difficult. They joined Vitautis, led by an out-of-the-box coach, so pushing the ball fast and shooting a lot of threes was already part of their playbook but it became apparent almost immediately that the Ball brothers were ill-prepared for the rigors of a European pro league. They quickly created the Big Baller brand challenge to get the Ball brothers some experience and confidence, and they excelled playing against lower-level competition. However, for the past five games, Lamelo and Leangelo had played for Vitauskas in the LKL, the top league in Lithuania, and it's been a struggle for both of them and the team. It speaks volumes that an unorthodox coach like Virginius Seskus almost immediately had issues with the way LaMelo plays. Losers of their first four games, they only pulled out a win in a game where LaMelo got benched after the first eight minutes. As you can see, there's not a lot of movement on offense when the newcomers play, and Melo has been struggling to finish at the rim despite showing nice moves to attack the closeout. And he's realizing that athletes at this level are much more efficient than anything he's dealt with before. So the nonchalant flips at full speed at the rim won't go down as easily as he thinks. Melo is prone to get caught in mid-move without much of a plan. And with little time to adjust, ends up tossing up terrible shots, which give the other team a fast break. Or lead to a bad turnover as he's going too fast, gets caught up in the air, and has no option besides the charge. But it's this attitude that also leads to bad turnovers, when he just doesn't take the time to scan the floor and read the defense. His shot selection is what has been driving the coach insane, and in this instance, down four with only a minute 20 left, he tosses up a wild one in a game they eventually lost by eight. And the multi-dribble isolations out top into a contested three don't go over all that well either, especially when they miss by as much as this one did. Lamelo is slowly discovering that older and wiser basketball players know how to play the game, and splitting a pick and roll out here is a lot different than it was in high school. And notice how he doesn't sprint back after his own turnover to help the defense contain the break and eventual wide open three point shot. In the open court, he struggled against the savvy veterans who know how to read his moves and force him into turnovers and horrible off-balance shots by simply backing up and not giving him the contact he was expecting. And there are times when his passing is wild and reckless. I get what he was trying to do with this one to his brother, but it was just not there and unworthy of the risk. The Europeans on defense can also goad him into throwing skip passes that appear to be open, only to pounce on it immediately and head back down court. Lamelo has shown flashes of his shooting ability, with back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back long, quick threes without passing the ball. But look at the score. These shots tend to be a bit empty, and it's the misses that come when the game is closer that only serve to extend the opponent's lead. Right now, Lamelo is only shooting 30% from three-point land, and that percentage will have to go up if he's going to justify jacking up contested long shots early in the clock. Lamelo has been at his best when he's playing within himself, under control, and makes the easy pass, like this dime to the roll man, simple yet effective. Or this high pick and pop where he finds the shooter early and accurately for a good step into a three-pointer and the assist. As he gets more comfortable with the European game, I suspect we'll see more of the highly skilled play like the perfect timing to take an extra dribble before whipping a left-handed hook pass to the roll man for the layup. And check this beautiful read of the pick and roll, and going right left off both feet to glide by the help defender for the soft layup. But until that time where he matures, we'll continue to see plenty of what is he doing plays, trying to spin back into a double team here, or jumping from 14 feet out off the left leg, then double pumping a left-handed floater over the defender when he has a pass for a wide open three. Or this play, 
where he appears to trip on a spectator's foot, but takes forever to get back in the play, then gets beat easily before giving up completely. This one is interesting. The shot isn't the worst choice out there, but watch what he does on defense as his man approaches him at half court. And then, instead of recognizing his man was picked up by a teammate already, he runs to the corner anyway, which directly leads to a wide open shot out top. And while they do escape, by not giving up a basket, despite multiple offensive rebounds and easy shots, you can see another example of his finishing issues on this fast break, as he misses the easy dump off to the trail man and instead tries to take a flying, switching hand scoop on the way down that doesn't go in. D'Angelo has played much better, which is to be expected since he's two years older than Melo and is bigger and stronger and more mature physically. He's averaging almost 14 points in just 20 minutes a game while shooting 45% from three. And he's also shown the ability to get the ball down low and put the ball in the basket strong. Here's the Chino Hills play where they throw a 60-foot post-entry pass from Melo to Leangelo, who shows nice footwork against a smaller opponent to draw the foul and the free throws. You could argue the biggest issue is with their defense. Having never had to play it in high school, they've got some bad habits that are going to make it a problem for them to play lots of minutes at any level. Leangelo is walking out there as his man cuts to the wing. There was no need for him to help on the roll man, and his teammate is trying to tell him to get out there on the shooter. Because he's so far behind, it forces a rotation and leads to a wide open corner three. Watch Lamello on this pick and roll. Switches happen all the time, but you have to hustle to get between your man and the ball, this doesn't happen and it leads to a straight line drive and free throws. Leangelo is clearly guarding this guy out top, but just stops at the free throw line, then tries to pretend he was picking up number three on the wing. It's also not clear if the coach's intent on defense is to randomly trap the ball, but half-assing it like Nello does here ain't gonna work against veterans. Neither will this effort after the pass was made. Both brothers tend to give up on the play very early as Leangelo clearly should have switched to the roll man, but opts to just walk out there, giving up the layup. I spoke with Luke Bonner, owner of the Power Forward Sports Group, who played Division I college basketball and two years as a pro in Lithuania. I asked him how the competition there compares to college basketball and the NBA. Yeah, I mean, it, it, within the league in Lithuania, it varies pretty dramatically. It is it is a, a really good basketball country. Like, it's a basketball-crazed place. Everyone plays. Uh, there's really no professional soccer uh, league there that's, like, c gets any fandom. In most European countries, that's kind of king. But in Lithuania, it's basketball. Every Everyone plays. You know, it's a, it's a country of about 3 million and, you know, they're pulling bronze medals in, in the Olympics and in the world game. So it's a really basketball rich country. The, the league itself is, is, is very good. It's, it's grown man basketball. It's really physical. The top teams there are, are very good, like the Jalgaris, the Tuvas Ritas. Those teams are, are very, very good. Um, I was there during the NBA lockout. You know, those teams attracted NBA players. That being said, some of the, the bottom level teams are, are not quite as good um the the balls were pretty clever um with those first couple games that they did during the the baller brand challenge um i know like two of them i saw were it, it appeared like they were playing jalgaris um and they two Ritas, but they're actually playing the, the the second teams from those programs so it was mostly you know 17 to 22 year old uh, players, um, some of which, you know, might even end up coming over here and playing college ball before, uh, you know, starting their pro careers. So it sounds to me like they played about five games now at the upper level with the, re the regular club. And uh, I don't think that they're doing that well this year as a team. So if you had to compare what uh, how difficult this level would be to something in America, I guess maybe to Division One basketball, how would those compare? Which one's better? Which one's worse? Or can you not even do that? I wouldn't say which one's better, which one's worse. Um, it's it's a different animal. Um, I, I think that Lithuanian, like the LKL, is probably better than it'd be like high level Division One basketball. There are a lot of guys over there. Um, I remember playing against in 
you know, different Lithuanians and such that were playing in the ACC, you know, a couple of years ago and they go back to Lithuania and play their professional careers. Um, and that's not even necessarily on, you know, the top tier teams. So it's, it's definitely a lot, a lot better, I think, than, um, you know, a lot of people realize. So there you have it, sports fans. The seemingly never-ending saga of the Ball family continues as LeVar has brought his reality show to Europe. So far, the results are pretty mixed at best. But this could very well be a great experience for two young men to live in a foreign country, experience a different culture, work on their games as professionals, and grow as human beings. While you may not agree with what LeVar is doing, it is certainly possible that there is some sort of method to his madness. Sports fans, to see more of our great NBA content and analysis, make sure to hit the subscribe button, but also click the bell and adjust your settings so you can get an alert the second our videos drop, because trust me, you're going to want them hot and fresh. You in?